folk shattered and grieve. See the devil wanna scatter and deceive. And God's no love, he'll leave you battered to bleed. Every day getting sadder, we need the love of Jesus Christ instead of another platter of weed. I pray the Lord has mercy on my soul. Sometimes I find me climbing up the ladder of greed. Trying to get my school right, but the Lord said I'd be more blessed if I go ahead and scatter my seed. So I'm trying to do everything he tells me instead of saying that I really started back in high school. And for those that do know me from high school would know that, you know, specifically in my senior year, you know, I'd wake up in the morning, of course, get ready for school, go throughout my days. But as I was going through my classes and such, in between classes, I would sell dope. I mean, anything from cocaine to, um, you know, um, uh, marijuana, weed, to, you know, whatever else that I could get my hands on to make money. And that's basically what got me started. So from that, you know, I started with like, you know, your typical gram of weed to ounces to pounds and got well connected in the game, you know, from those people that I crossed paths with. Hmm. And um, that's really what got me into it. Now, what was going on within? I mean, having like said that uh, biblical foundation. I mean, I'm sure something in you was saying, hey, this ain't right. Yeah. So how did you deal with that? How did you, how did you deal with your conscience during that whole uh, lifestyle process? At that time, um, it wasn't such a fight in a sense as far as my conscience because when you live that lifestyle, you, you tend to not have one. So therefore, mm. you don't feel as guilty when you're going out robbing somebody or taking somebody, you know. Well, how did, how did, but how did you get to that point? Is it just you do it over and over and over? And pretty yeah, I think it's a fact for me that, you know, I got away with it. So therefore, I'm thinking, well, shoot, if I can get away with something smaller, I can get away with something bigger. Mm -hmm. So that in itself becomes a drug, almost to the fact that, you know, you're getting away with something that you, you shouldn't be doing. And that's really what got me, you know, really more motivated to get more money or to get that hustle flowing, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and you got hooked up with some pretty big connections during that uh, time and, and, you know, yeah. your know, life in crime. So I, I've yeah. crossed paths, you know, from the whole gamut of street people, per se. So from, you know, everyone in a sense of, you know, the Hells Angels, uh, the Mexican Mafia, Crips and Bloods. So I did come across those types of individuals. And I think for me, again, being a part of something so big that it became like, you know, like, wow, you know, I'm really doing something for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it almost empowered me of the fact that I got more connections as I was doing my hustle. And that's really what got me or kept me going forward in this path or this lifestyle. Okay, so you're seeing yourself progressing in the game. And, and what was your ultimate goal? I mean, what was your goal being involved in that game? I'm sure there's a lot of paranoia because, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of people getting double crossed in the drug game, in the hustle game, you know, even by their own gang, by their own clique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely true. I definitely got crossed up a few times in a bad situations, but... I didn't let that hinder me because there was a, a pot at the end of that rainbow. So if I had to go through that, then that's what I had to do, you know. So there have been times where um, I literally had like guns pointed at me, you know, gats, what have you, AKs. I've mm -hmm. seen it all. So it, it, again, it was just solidified what I was doing was I thought at the time was correct in my eyes, in my view. Because, again, I was a part of something bigger than myself. Now, now were you using at that time also? Yeah, I was definitely using at that time. Um, and how, how that help, did that kind of help you become, you know, sedated to a lot of the, the fear and the paranoia that was going on? Yeah, most of the times, of course, you know, when you're under, uh, under uh, influence of drugs and what have you, yeah, you kind of have a hazy thought or foggy uh, vision of what you know, what's reality and what's not. So for me, being on drugs or being on some type of hallucinogen or what have you, it made it easier to do all these things because again, it, it left me with no conscience. Mm, okay. So now I'm sure there was times where you would have your ups and downs, maybe dealing with depression. Uh, you know, like I said, coming from that background did you feel like guy was speaking to you from time to time telling you to exit the game yeah actually 
there is a thing between God, good versus evil. And for those, and including myself, I always had that back of my mind. There's always uh, someone or something talking to me to tell me, hey, this is wrong, you shouldn't do this, or hey, you should do it this way. But I ignored that fact again because I was more focused on the money, you know, because that was my number one goal. So money became almost like a god and, and a serious item <clears throat> for you. Very much so, because again, in my neighborhood, you know, I got to see people, what they call balling, you know, would just drive into the uh, neighborhood with bands, you know, with bands or something and not have a job, you know. In fact, the first car I bought was a BMW cash right out of high school, senior mm. year, without even blinking an eye, I just dropped the cash on them. Like it was nothing. And that to me felt empowering because I can buy anything I want. Well, during those times when I was living that lifestyle, there was really no fear of death because I was anticipating death. And I honestly didn't care about myself or any other person. So therefore there was no fear at all. Brother Gene, how do you, how do you get to that point where a person doesn't even care about their life or another's? I mean, you know, how does that, you know, like, where does that process start, you know, from, like I said, what, how does this person get conditioned uh, to come to that point? For myself, I got conditioned to, to get to that point by just um, continuously doing wrong. So, in essence, when I continue to do wrong and continue that path, it became almost like air. It was like breathing air it became so natural that it was no longer a, even a thought. It was just, it would just, I would just do it. If whatever I thought about doing at that time, I just did it just because I knew I could get away with it. Mm -hmm. Now, during that time, was somebody trying to talk to you or mentor you and, you know, to, to lead you back on the right path? And if so, what was your response to them? Well, there was a, a few friends of mine, good friends, I have to say, try to get me out of that lifestyle. But Unfortunately, I wasn't listening to nobody because, so, again, I was I felt like more empowered because I had everything I, I wanted. So who are they to talk to you when you got more than what they got? Exactly. I mean, who are they to tell me what what to do with my life when I've already got what I wanted? You know, so I didn't listen to anybody or, or anyone for that particular reason. You know, now there came a point to where the supernatural came to you. You had a near-death experience. Yeah, there was. That was pretty powerful. Yeah, there was one incident, um, to be exact, and that really made a life-altering change for my life. I had a near-death experience, and it was the last stint that I did. Actually, I went um, and um, attempted an armed robbery, which most people would know as a 211, and almost got caught with a case for a 187. Um, because my partner at that time had a gun and they were going to slap that on me too during the uh, process of that armed robbery. So I was looking at an easy 15 to 20 years minimum uh, for armed robbery. And I have to say, um, thank God that I, it was only, uh, they only got me for an attempt because you, I probably wouldn't even be speaking here right now to you. So long and short, at that time, one evening, I just honestly just didn't care. I was so suicidal that I didn't care about myself or anybody, to be honest with you. Um, long story short, um, we did this armed robbery uh, locally and hit the pa uh, front page newspaper too. Um, and we got caught up, basically. So in the midst of all that, I got... Um, I basically got arrested at that time with like five shotguns pointed to my head, spread eagled on the, on the ground. So I knew and then that, hey, you know, this is it for me. You know, I'm either going to die or end up incarcerated for life. But to rewind a little bit, right before we're about to commit that crime, just to show uh, to myself that there was this, another sp spiritual uh, positive awareness Prior to that crime, I actually heard this song, and I don't even listen to that type of music, but I heard this song, kept playing in my head, talking about um, if God was watching us, there's a song, and I kept hearing it. Mm. Um, 
So, uh, so this was a song that you had heard about. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, you, you I heard it on the radio. You. I heard, I heard it on the radio, but it, it just kind of popped in my head right before the commission of this crime. So God was speaking to me and telling me, "Hey, mm. that's the wrong way," you know. That's powerful. <clears throat> so anyway, um, um, I got arrested, went to jail, got booked, and um, um, I bailed out. Luckily, I, I had my brother bail me out at that time. So once I was bailed out, I ended up getting a hotel that evening uh, once I was bailed out. And um, at that time, I was literally um, very suicidal. So I didn't really care about myself, you know. I'm really depressed and some personal stuff was going through my mind and everything else was kind of like caving in on me. So at that time, I did this crime because, hey, you know, what the heck, you know. I just did it because I knew I could get away with it. I'm so used to it. So I said, you know, F it and let's do this. Anyway, I got arrested, bailed out, and got a hotel room that, that night with my girlfriend at the time. And um, during this time, I was laying in bed and I kept telling my girl, say, look, I'm feeling cold. I, f I feel really cold. And I started shivering. And during this time frame, um, I'm telling her I'm cold, so she, she lays on top of me to try to keep me warm. Um, as she's doing this, I um, first started smelling this weird smell in the room. And um, I noticed, looking up in the ceiling, I see this dark little mist of smoke coming from one corner of the room and start to fill and billow in on the top of the ceiling. like. I was in the middle of some fire or something, but all I saw was smoke. Um, and I knew right then and there, to me, that was, to me, that was death coming for me. Because mm. I was getting ready to die, you know. I was really, like, giving up myself, my, my spirit, everything. So, long story short, this smoke fills the room, and I just remember being so cold. And my girl told me after the fact, that my body actually turned blue. That's how I was mm. really dead for like 60 seconds or more. Mm -hmm. While this is happening, unknown to me, as she's laying on top of me on the bed, I feel my spirit leave my body and hover above the bed. And I could see her um, mm. laying on top of me. Mm. So, you know, that's when I knew that I was dead, you know? You can't come back from that. <laughs> so what's going through your head at that time? At that time, shoot, I thought I was going, literally. And what, I was. <laughs> what type of fear was striking you at that time? Oh, at that time, there was definitely a fear of God, you mm. know? And honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that I have a spiritual background, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't even be here. So what, so what, like, so what came to, <clears throat> your heart at that time when you're going through that when you're thinking you're probably thinking I'm going to hell Yeah, basically um, when that at that time when that smoke came in I knew that that was uh, Basically the bad spirit coming for me, you know, they come first and what would that smell smell like <clears throat> boy that smell of death is is beyond any any detail I could even begin to describe I mean, it was worse than um, it was worse than um, probably being in the middle of a dump dump site. Mm -hmm. It was that bad, but ten times worse. It mm -hmm. was like <clears throat> garbage upon garbage, and the smell of death in the air was like dead bodies. Basically, that's the best way I could describe it. So it's like the portal of hell was just opening up. Yeah. So when they they was coming for me first, I knew they were coming. Um, all I could remember. Uh, as I was leaving my body and spirit is to utter these words and those words was um, please God help me mm. so when I uttered those words um, again I was above my uh, my body with my girlfriend on top of me trying to keep me warm or get me back to my normal body temperature but unknown to me I was actually dead at that time so, um, like they say, I saw this light at the end of the tunnel. And when I said those words, 
Um, God help me. Yeah. Said, um, that's when he came. Mm. And um, he started talking to me. So basically, um, he, he said, it's not your time yet. So, <clears throat> so uh, when he said that, I felt my body lay back down. And as, as I, my spirit went back into my body. Now, when he talked to you, what was you feeling when he talked to you? What did it feel like being in the presence of God like that? When, when, he, when God spoke to me, it was, like, it was like freedom in a sense, like no pain, you know. I had no emotion but happiness at that time. Mm -hmm. So um, after that, I knew that it wasn't time for me. So I felt my spirit lay back down to my body and I felt cold again. Mm. And uh, as I'm going back to my body, I see this <clears throat> little light at the same corner well, this dark smoke came and did, <clears throat> did a 360 degree turn and basically uh, cleaned up the air and the spirit, the bad spirit, out of the room. And then a burst of light kind of blew up and mm -hmm. you could see it physically. Hmm. And uh, that's when I knew that I was back in my body and I started shivering. And uh, basically, that's what. Uh, Changed my life. Mm. I believe in my heart, the minute that I uttered those words, or the word Jesus or God, it really solidified how strong and powerful that word so is. Much. There's no name above your name. I wouldn't serve any other name. Yeah, sure, Mashiach. There's power in the name.
everything, God. We love you.